Thank you all, Vardy. I'm a miracle. I'm a tolish chick of a caramacum. If you cook with Kutcher, Kutcher the coming after you used to two of the East. How she is Prosik Nagai and O'Connor, like Harris in the Plianish, I guess she told us this more gone. If you cook with Kutcher the East. It's a great pleasure to be working with coming after you used to two again on a on a joint project uh, through through Island Voices. Um, so this partnership that you referred to uh, has been going for a while. Um, I've got a few slides, uh, mostly pictures, uh, which I'll talk about. And, and hopefully uh, over, the, over the piece, give an idea of the kind of rough plan we have for, for running workshops. Uh, I say it's a rough plan and that's quite deliberate because uh, it's going to depend, obviously, to an extent, to a large extent, on uh, responses and reactions from those who, who wish to take part. And I just want to emphasize that it is flexible in that way, um, not coming into this with a, 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 an established uh, idea of what it is that we're going to do. Ach, Misha and Dasha, who am I? Well, it's me and Gideon Sarke, Ek, Anachyonich, Gillespik, uh, Anne McClellan from Balamor, North Uist. Um, very grateful to Komaniatri Uistjatur for this lovely picture in the top left here from 1924, Pavel School. And you can see Anna Hyani there in the front row. Um, and that's her blown up a bit, a bit, a bit uh, obscure perhaps. Um, so that's, that's my background. There she is. Uh, graduating from Glasgow University shortly before the war, uh, the first in her family so to do, whether male or female. And then in her professional life, she became a teacher trainer and spent time in India. Um, and uh, the, the shadowy figure you can see behind her is uh, George Reginald Wells, the man she met and married while in India. And so those are old pictures. Some newer ones, slightly newer ones, are ones I took myself uh, in the 70s as a teenager. And you can see other members of the family here. Uh, Morek Hyoni, the eldest daughter in the family, my mother's oldest sister, married to Don uh, Ellen McIntosh, Don Dallin McIntosh from Heiskid, and they lived in Loch, uh, near Loch Soundly. They had a craft there, and we used to visit them in the summer. Um, and over here on the left, helping Donald Allen with the peats is, is Norman, my mother's youngest brother, Taramatiani, who went away after the war, um, but did eventually come back and spent his last years in Uist with, with Donald Allen and Morek on the craft. And there you can see elements of the, of the environment around them at the time. Um, so those are the personal connections, if you like, uh, Ushjan mentioned the importance of uh, community and university cooperation and collaboration, and that's something which I very much uh, endorse. Um, so we've got the Island Voices Guhan and Yelan banner at the top there as a kind of umbrella, if you like, um, and a bridge, the way I see it, between community and, and college. Um, and along the bottom, we've got Solmor Ostek, of course. It was out of a, a European project from, started in Solmor Ostek that the uh, Guhan and Yelan project uh, emerged. Um, also connecting, of course, with Sailsha, the Inter-University Gaelic Research Partnership, which has been in the news recently, and the new kid on the block, um, which is directed by the same director, Crawford or Gilligan, um, at, in UHI itself, the, the Language Sciences Institute. Um, so those are the institutional connections. Uh, and just to repeat the importance in my mind of ensuring good uh, communication and collaboration between community and university uh, as this project moves forward. Um, the focus from our point of view is going to be on Gaelic and Gaelic in the Hebrides in particular. And there are various ways of looking at that. One is from a, a numbers game point of view. Uh, the 2011 census reinforces 
probably a sense which most of us share uh, of the importance of the Hebrides, North Uist amongst them, of course, uh, in relation to Gaelic. Uh, if you look at figures for Scotland as a whole, or even for other parts of the Highlands and Islands, then the share of Gaelic speakers within the surrounding community is really rather small. It's only when you get to the Outer Hebrides that you see this uh, pattern where there is still a really substantial number of proportion of, of Gaelic speakers within the local community. Um, so that points to the strength of Gaelic in the Hebrides, which is fine, uh, but we need to balance that with um, an approach to numbers which looks in really a lot more detail than you can get from a couple of questions on the census. And that's where this 2020 research report comes in on the Gaelic crisis in the vernacular community, uh, which was conducted by colleagues in Salisha. Um, and the point I suppose I would want to make there is that uh, we need to have this solid baseline of real knowledge um, in order to, to build something from it. And, and that's what the, uh, the Gallic Crisis Report offers in terms of giving us real figures, as it were. Um, so in a program of workshops, we would want to start with that and have the opportunity to actually quiz that uh, report quite closely. Um, the numbers game is one way of looking at the language. It's not the only way, uh, and it certainly shouldn't be the only way. Um, and I suppose what I've tried to capture in this next slide is this notion of language capture and curation, slightly jargonistic term perhaps. What it really points to is the importance of recording and sharing uh, of recordings um, so that we get a picture of how the language works uh, in today's world, um, looking at the way it's used, how it's used in the community, how it may or may not be changing, so on and so forth. Um, and we've been doing that through Island Voices, I suppose, uh, for the past 15 years or more. And this top left collection here of Island Voices recordings is how we started with short documentaries and then uh, on uh, local events and local uh, organizations, complemented with interviews with real people in the community who, who had uh, something to do with those events or organizations. So that's how we started with um, interviews made by project staff, but moving on swiftly to more of an emphasis on community contribution of those kind of recordings, whether that's from community groups or individuals, like uh, in terms of groups, uh, we've mentioned Komoniati Ujtutua already. Uh, the Great War Project was one such of those where people went out with iPads, uh, Artie among them, I recall, um, uh, and making recordings with um, uh, local people. Bonnie Prince Charlie was one we did with Stordas Ujt, uh, similarly in, in, in similar style, uh, but also significant contributions from particular individuals, notably among them, of course, uh, Norman McLean. Um, we've got loads of recordings which Norman himself contributed after he came and settled back in Uist. Um, and that's an approach which we've been following through Island Voices for some time, and it's one which has been taken up elsewhere as well. Uh, and this, slide, this uh, graphic on the right here is taken from, it's a screenshot from the Language Sciences Institute web pages, where you can see some of the collections uh, which are being uh, accumulated and shared through that site. Um, so that's another way and an equally important way of looking at languages and looking at Gaelic. Looking at Gaelic, I want to emphasize here that that's the focus, but it's not an exclusive focus by, in any way. Um, and we want to make this as inclusive an exercise as possible um, through uh, support for learners or for non-speakers at all. And we've done that in the past through the development of various uh, technical supports. Uh, the one on the left here uh, with the picture of Norman telling a story, you'll see that alongside the video, there is also a transcript uh, and it's got a clever trick, this transcript, 
because if you're a learner and you're coming at, you're reading and you're listening at the same time and you come across a word you don't know, you can just click on it and then lo and behold on the right hand side, an instant translation cropped up for that particular word. Uh, so that's quite useful for learners. Uh, for non-speakers who don't have any guide at all, um, we've recently taken to subtitling our videos as well as an option. They're not burnt in, but you can click on a button on YouTube to get the site subtitles to come up and they can come up in Gaelic. Here's Flora talking in Gaelic and there's the Gaelic subtitle for that. But YouTube is such a clever tool these days that you can actually click another button and then you can get that uh, Gaelic subtitle translated immediately into another language such as English or French or German or a host of others. Um, so, a, a focus on Gaelic, but a, not a monolingual focus on Gaelic. We're very much a multilingual project, and that's the way we mean to continue. Um, a few more examples of, of actual content here. Uh, the kind of things which we've covered in the past, local history, and there's the land raid story from uh, Alec, which uh, uh, Archie helped me elicit, as far as I recall. Um, Storytelling, another aspect, we've got plenty from Norman, but also other local storytellers, as Mathy knows. Also looking at the way Gaelic is, it has been used in the past, is used now, and maybe in the future, so actually focusing on the language itself, and with uh, speakers across the generations, not just the old, but also the young as well. And the end more dot, dot, dot is also important here, I want to underline that, because uh, this is just a, a, a taste, if you like, uh, and we're very open to exploring new topics uh, and new genres as well, if that's the way the workshops develop, as it were. Um, okay, so what's the plan? Uh, session one, as I said, we want to uh, focus in on the Gallic crisis in the vernacular community report and actually get an update from the, from the research team behind that report. Uh, and that gives us an opportunity as well from the community to put questions directly to those researchers um, in Gaelic or English. Um, so that would be a, a, a kickoff, if you like, a starting point so that we're all starting from the same page. Um, in subsequent sessions, maybe another two or three sessions after that, I'd like to experiment with uh, taking selected extracts from our collection, just as you would artifacts from a museum, um, to stimulate discussion in Gaelic or reminiscences or new ideas and the, the airing of more questions and concerns um, so that we can add to the, the contemporary record of, of, of Gaelic speech, uh, Gaelic memories and Gaelic opinions, particularly as they relate to this overall topic of uh, well-being, whether that's in, as an individual or a community level. So that's the participatory aspect to what we're planning or hoping to go, to go through. Um, behind the scenes, there would be follow-up. Uh, I mentioned already the importance of inclusion, so we would want to uh, transcribe and subtitle any recordings that we make so that any interested member of the community, no matter their, their skills in Gaelic, can gain an increased knowledge of customs and practices and issues in Gaelic um, amongst their, their friends and neighbors. And also, as uh, Jess also mentioned, um, we're going to need to review the process uh, and evaluate how it's worked um, in, to see if it's worth developing this kind of way of working further. Um, which brings me to my last slide. I hope I haven't gone too far over time. Um, and that's the invitation uh, to everyone here who's a Gaelic speaker um, to come along to these sessions. Uh, we haven't dated any of them yet. We're probably going to run the first one before the summer break and then come back to do the uh, participatory sessions uh, after the summer break. Um, it's the idea is to, as I say, look at videos or recordings that have been made and see what kind of ideas and memories uh, and thoughts 
they stimulate and share those memories and thoughts uh, uh, again uh, in the community. It's a new approach, a new format, if you like, but it's it's not completely untested. We have tried it out already in English um, with uh, some clips from Norman um, being discussed between university partners in English, um, uh, between UHI ourselves and also partners in, in university partners in India and Jamaica um, and with local community language speakers here in the UK. So very much uh, adhering to this notion that uh, there needs to be ongoing exchange and communication between academy and community if we're going to take things forward uh, to, in the best possible way. <laughs>